We're living in the pages of the next generation's history books. We all knew that a global pandemic would come one day, but it's still shocking to see just how quickly and how much it has changed the way people live and work. I trained in both internal medicine and infectious diseases in the United States, but I had an opportunity to move to Sweden with my husband, and I interviewed first for a job at the Swedish Medical Products Agency. They needed someone to work in their clinical trials department, but they also needed someone to work in their pharmacovigilance department. And it was at that time I learned that pharmacovigilance was the practice of monitoring the safety of medicines once they are put out on the market. And at that moment, I knew that that was actually what I wanted to do. So I guess you could say that in a way, I didn't find pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance found me. And then when I got involved, what I noticed was that the methodology that we use to monitor the safety of medicines is very similar to that that you use to investigate infectious disease outbreaks. So after about five years as a regulator, I had the opportunity to move to UMC and it was there that I realized I had really found a perfect fit for me. With the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic, interestingly, I find myself not participating as an infectious diseases doctor, but rather as a member of the community of pharmacovigilance, which has an important role to play in patient safety. So I was one of the first employees uh, starting working at Uppsala Monitoring Center. Uh, I was a newly graduate from pharmacy school. Uh, that was back in 1992. And during my time at UMC, I've been supporting the member countries of the WHO program with daily activities, making searches in uh, the database, overseeing the signal work that we do. Today, I'm head of pharmacovigilance collaborations, making sure that UMC's activities stays in sync with the WHO's agenda. Personal relationships are vital in pharmacovigilance and a lot of it has to do with effective communication and collaboration. As everything else now uh, in Corona times, we have to work hard in order to adapt and keep the communication and the interaction with the countries moving on in order to achieve patient safety. Las bases de datos entienden qué es el seguimiento. Puesto tenemos la, la manera de identificar casos serios. My role at UMC is to provide a scientific, technical and operational support to national centers members of the WHO program for international drug monitoring. Uh, I focus mainly in Latin America, but I also provide the same type of support to other countries around the world. We've been finding new ways of keeping in touch yeah, it's harder at times, but we at UMC and all of our colleagues throughout the WHO program, we realize how important is our work right now in this corona situation. We're mentioning in the beginning, right? Right. As a member of the research section, I provide clinical expertise in the assessment of safety concerns, but also in the development of new methodologies for monitoring medicine safety. The pandemic is a moment when people who don't know anything about pharmacovigilance suddenly pay attention. As bad as this crisis is, it's also an opportunity for us to help people understand the importance of medicine safety. Vaccines. Hit on that SDG tab, then you would see. When existing drugs are used on a new disease in new categories of patients, we just don't know what kind of new safety issues may arise. But the systems and methods we've built at UMC put us in a position to use real-time data to help people make clinical decisions. And obviously there's a big rush for a vaccine now. And there are a lot of potential candidates out there, many using novel methodologies that haven't been used in people before. And that's going to mean effectively gathering and analyzing a lot of data in real time and clearly communicating what we find.
So when I started working in Uppsala Monitoring Center, we used to receive thick envelopes with ADR forms from the member countries that we had to manually type into the system. During the years now, the development and evolution of the digital tools have helped us a lot in handling these big amounts of data that is now coming. And with the increasingly sophisticated data science techniques, we can now extract more valuable insights from the data and perform better and more efficient analysis than ever. The quality of what you get out of VDBased, it depends so much on the quality of the data that you put in. So we do a lot to provide guidance to the member countries on how to code the data in their report management systems, so it can be readily available for analysis in Vigilize. This isn't our first pandemic. Already when H1N1 pandemic was around, we did work together with Swissmedic to develop a tool that we call the PaniFlow, which would support uh, quicker data capture and sharing of data. COVID-19 has uh, definitely disrupted how we get our work done. But over the years, we prepared the infrastructure and action plans we knew we would need for a situation like this. That work has paid off and we can now maintain normal operations even in abnormal circumstances. I work a lot uh, with government officials, uh, regulatory authorities uh, and ministries of health. And basically the aim of UMC is to support uh, those institutions in order for them to gain knowledge and to strengthen their pharmacovigilance systems. We also help to connect uh, those institutions to each other so they can learn from each other. In this pandemic, we know that there are drugs out there that could be useful to treat an infection due to coronavirus. However, we don't know how that drug will interact with a new patient, so that's why it's important for us to have governments monitor it. It is also important for us to help governments have their systems ready for when the new vaccine is out, in order for them to get consistent high quality data for analysis. At UMC we have always had a strong research agenda that has uh, developed our tools and techniques to scan the big database that we have at hand. So today we can now analyze more drugs in a more sophisticated way than ever. Something else that we have improved on in the last year is our ability to share with the world what we are doing. Early on in this pandemic, an old medicine for malaria, hydrochlorochine, was repurposed to be used in COVID-19 patients. And luckily we had already made a review of that medicine based on data and VGBase. So that could rapidly be shared with the WHO and to be shared through their pharmaceuticals newsletter with the world. When I was training in a hospital in Mexico, I got a routine infection, but I actually got a severe drug reaction due to the medicines I was prescribed. Uh, I suffered of uh, acute kidney failure and it was uh, pretty bad. Uh, my doctors even wanted to write up the case for publication. For me, this incident taught me a lot. It is one thing to work with reports and statistics, but we should always remember that each report is a patient, a person that might be going through something tough. The COVID-19 pandemic has created a global challenge like we've never experienced before, and it demands urgent action from everyone involved in healthcare. But despite that urgency, we have to stay calm and clear-headed. We cannot afford to lose sight of patient safety. At this time, perhaps more than ever before, our pharmacovigilance community can show how our expertise can help protect the safety of patients everywhere.